climate change is one of the major threats to Uganda's sustainable development and effort to end poverty. Third, November 2019, welcome to this edition of the news on KIU TV with me, Andrew Onen, and first to take a look at the top stories. <laughs> Temperature variations, a barrier to agricultural fruition. Journalists beat to a mass sensitization on climate change impacts. Government policies blamed for escalating environmental degradation. And organizations launched digital campaigns to counter climate change. And now the news in detail. Climate change has had diverse impacts on various sectors in the country. Uganda's backbone agriculture, which employs 70% of the population with a 25% GDP, is one of the most affected in the country. Our reporter Martha Kahunde has more on this story. When it is hot, people are dying in hunger, and when it rains, floods leave people with nowhere to run. Higher temperatures and changes in rainfall patterns are the most critical climate change-related disasters facing Uganda. We have the evidence. We have places like Bruda where there are landslides. We have places like Utaleja where floods and, and, and drought occur almost simultaneously. You have um, lakes that are receding. We have Lake Messina in, uh, in the Teso area, which is receding, evidently. Agriculture, as the backbone of Uganda's economy, accounting for more than 25% of Uganda's GDP and employing more than 70% of its labor force has directly been affected by these changes in rainfall and rising temperatures. Areas of production, the impact is so big. That's why you see you go and try to approach even genus, approach cassava, approach to sweet potatoes, you can't get any. Climate change has not only affected agriculture, but has also had diverse effects on all the areas of our lives. It will affect your food security, the health, the environment, a lot of other issues are based on how well we adapt to climate changes. Climate change is no longer a possibility of the future. It is a scary reality that is now fully upon us. For KIU TV, Martha Kahunde. And now, away from that, the government has been blamed for the escalating environmental degradation in Uganda. Enforcement on the government policy on rapid industrialization and growth falls among the leading factors in, in degradation. Ruth KTC has more on this. Uganda is one of the countries that are affected by climate change. According to Lominda Afedrera, a Del Monitor reporter, the Ministry of Water and Environment recorded that the mean annual temperature increased at 1.3 degrees Celsius since 1960, with more rapid temperature rise of 0.37 degrees Celsius per decade in January and February, although expertise advise it better to maintain it below 1.5 degrees Celsius. Robert Zempala, the executive director at Human Rights Network for Journalists Uganda, says the country's policy of rapid industrialization and growth has led to environmental degradation, and yet the government is doing little about it. I think politically, we've not been very assertive in terms of protecting the environment. And as a result, we are losing out on uh, preservation of our environment, which spells um, a bad future. Uh, for, for the future generation, for me. Nirere Sadrash, a coordinator at Fridays for the Future Uganda, also says that various non-government organizations are trying their best to play and achieve their part in fighting against climate change. We are demanding for urgent climate action. So entirely the civil society, the NGO world, I can say, it is achieving part of what it is supposed to be doing. Uganda is a vulnerable country on climate change and the government is giving in their best to help through non-government organizations, NGOs. But the question is, what have you done on combating the threat of climate change? For KIU TV, I'm Ruth Kaitesi. Thank you, Kaitesi. Mineral technology advancement has been identified as one of the solutions to address climate change in Africa. Climate Cafe and social media are among the technologies being used. Faisal Salima reports on these. 
Climate change has had drastic results on Africa and the world. While the bigger population remains asleep on this danger, different organizations have come out to fight climate change using digital technology and to create awareness. Nekjoga is walking the talk through their innovation, climate cafes that train journalists in digitally disseminating information on climate change to the public. Uh, first we have climate. One of the things we have done, we have the climate cafes, whereby we are training journalists in order to communicate climate information to the audience. Similarly, Fridays for Future Uganda, a global movement that demands action towards climate change through global strikes and digital campaigns that influence policy, engagement and attention in communities through social media. Global movements like ours have a characteristic working with digital tools and actual technology platforms. We use them first of all to amplify our voices for a better reach. We use the social media to also mobilize for our climate strike participation, including the public participation and the state participation. With the increasing danger that climate change poses to Uganda and the world at large, it has become more important than ever to build a community of citizens that are well informed and are using digital technology to fight climate change. Faisal Salima reporting live for KIU TV. Thank you, Salima, for that wonderful report. Moving on, farmers have attributed, I beg your pardon, farmers have attributed low commercial profits to heavy rains, one of the factors discouraging their engagement. Pajo Bodagmo and now reports. With agriculture holding 20% of the country's GDP, over 70% of the working population in Uganda are employed by the agriculture sector. A panel of resourceful persons speaking at the Inter-University Media Challenge organized by the Media Challenge Initiative ascertained university students saying there are various economic activities that affect the climate of this once pearl of Africa. Constance Okolet, the leader of Osukuru United Women's Organization, said the change in the climate has affected their production. Where the rains are too much, Profits are few and drought totally brings out nothing. If there's too much rain, you get less. If there's the drought, you get nothing. So that, those are the effects. They are counter attacking the climatic change through tree planting, use of solar energy, use of cook stove, use of component manure, and utilization of the little resources. We do a lot of uh, recycling. Okay. There is a compost manure to help the garden. There's mulching, there's one. So we don't waste resources, yeah? the natural resources. Seventy percent of Uganda's population are taking agriculture as the way of earning and the business today. The use of great agricultural methods and the proper mindset towards the climatic change can easily push away the negative change of this climate. I remain Idarus Pajobo, KIU TV. Thank you, Pajobo, right there. You know, today marks the end of a three-day media expo organized by Media Challenge Initiative at Zanadu Collection All Suite Hotel in Kampala. Our reporter, Derek Ashaba, reports live from the scene. Derek. Yes, at the moment, I am at Zanadu Collection Hotel where the Inter-University Media Challenge Expo 2019 is taking place. Today is the grand finale of the highly anticipated Inter-University Media Challenge Expo 2019 that kick started off earlier today with a Luganda news presentation from different universities and later on in the afternoon the English news presentation followed suit and are still going underway. Well the expo started two days back and with uh, the, the media challenge conference that engaged different journalists in a debate on reporting climate change. Day two of the expo was the media challenge career fair that provided a live market interaction between students and potential media employers. Well, the inter-university media challenge we are talking about was initiated in 2012 by the Media Challenge Initiative with the name of building the next generation of journalists and has so far trained over 4,000 students in different universities who are now employed in different media houses. Well, this year's expo, the Season 8 Expo, is running under the theme reporting on climate change in Uganda and Africa. Well, uh, 
sorry. Yes? Now, Derek, before we let you go, we would like to know how many universities are taking part in this competition? Well, uh, a number of top universities have participated in this year's Media Challenge Expo, and these are still lying in wait for the awarding night that will be at the Kampala Serena Hotel come November 24th. And of course, bearing in mind of the impact that is caused by the climate change on our country, there is still lack of public knowledge on this vice. Well, the media challenge in this year's project reporting on climate change in Uganda and Africa have paved way for the race of the different media fraternity to emulate. As the Nadu Collections, I'm Derek Asaba, back to you, Fiona Nameng and Andrew Onen at the Command Center. Thank you so much, Derek Ashaba, right there. And now, as the world rises to curb down the impact of climate change, a number of innovations and solutions have been initiated by different stakeholders to end the vice. Journalists have been tasked to share the information to the world. Ishaka Nsubuga reports on this. In an effort to save the increasing effects of climate change, journalists and the media at large have been tasked to be the lead actors in the fight. The LC5 chairman for Soroti, George Michael Egunyu, says... What are you doing there when you see that people are destroying the swamp? What are you doing? After I have told you the thing, now go and use it to make sure that we are saving the environment. Jerome Arab from DW Academy says that has a significant role in amplifying the message to the masses. More local climate story, stories needs to be told. The global facts are definitely relevant, but the starting point can be found in local context. This is the only way to make people feel understood and willing also to understand more. Some of the stories the journalists are tasked to show to the world include new innovations such as use of briquettes instead of charcoal, the value of planking more trees, among others. So I'm appealing to you to commit to securing your children's children and their children's children's safe future. The fight against climate change should not only rest in the hands of the experts or other activists, but the media too has a bigger task to play. For KIU TV, I am Ishak Nsubuga. Thank you, Ishak Nsubuga. With this, we come to the end of our English newscast right here on KIU TV. To engage or get more of our stories, follow us on our social media platforms at KIU TV on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Once again, I am Andrew Onen and till next time, good night.